we have another question from the YouTube live chat. Addy is asking, hi, can you please show us a little bit on how to rig a physics collider to a full body tracking? I'm kind of stuck because I have no idea how to visualize them in the preview and see it. It seems to keep passing through. One thing to consider is uh, to trigger the full screen or the full body avatar algorithm, you have to show a lot of your body. You have to really step back and get your whole body in the frame. So if you're testing while you're sitting at your desk, that might be kind of hard, but you really have to get up and into the screen. So let's uh, add body avatar drive to this. Um, so follow body position. Oh, we need, I think we need to open the template. I think that's a great tip because you don't exactly know when the body avatar starts being applied. So maybe um, you could have a little ball that comes up when it detects that there is a body avatar drive just to test whether it is activating and then you can test out. But August is going to give us some more useful tips. Yeah, that's a that's like one of the things I was definitely going to say is anytime you're not sure about something, add some visual component that you can see as a sanity check. Uh, wow, it's really coming around the corner. This sweater is <laughs> going to be relevant again someday. Yeah, soon. I know. Chinyu was making this um, last year around this time, and I remember. <laughs> and it, it's, it's full circle moment. Wait, but now that this reminds me, someone needs to make a Jack skeleton effect with the pumpkin so I can dance my spooky, scary skeletons. <laughs> or I've seen so many merch on TikTok shop recently that is like spooky themed. And I saw like this cute bluey sweater. I'm not sure if I'm willing to drop a couple dollars for it, but I would like to see a picture of me with it. So maybe I'll make the bluey version of like a Halloween merch and we can all try it out together. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is having this sweater in the pants on the body avatar drive, I feel makes it uh, so much easier to see where things are. Uh, so it's almost like I would use this template to set it up and then I would delete the clothes later when I don't need it any anymore. And that might be the most helpful thing. Um, so you can see where they are, like this is the where the hand is, and then you could, um, okay, so what I, what I usually do is when there's something like this where all of these bones are part of the actual rig and not part of, not something that I created, I'll usually create um, an empty scene object, which is, uh, <laughs> I thought there was a scene category. Okay, it's not there. Okay, I'll just add an empty mesh. Um, so, oops, I'm adding components. That's why I couldn't find it. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, okay, so scene, scene object. I love using this scene object, but I feel like it's often forgotten. Uh, so we reset it using the transform dot, 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 reset that's the quickest way to snap something when you after you've moved it to a new object just in case people have didn't know um <clears throat> so now it's on our hand and i just like to call these holders uh through every project that i do i always just call it holder so like uh collider holder and then i know that that's on the exact hand and i'm not going to move this it just represents this hand so that i do that because under the hood a lot of times with complex stuff, you don't know what the tool, what Effect House is going to do with these objects. I assume that these belong to Effect House and I shouldn't edit or modify them. So this makes it uh, this makes it easier to know, okay, it's not doing anything with my holder because I just made that. So yeah, that's just why I do that. It's a good tip. A lot less unexpected things happen that way. Uh, and then I guess for this time, I can just directly add a collider to this. And for a collider to work, I think you also need a rigid body. <clears throat> and if I don't want it to just drop, I can say it's static. 
And that should be all you have to do. We can add another cube. Um, oops, 3D cube. And that'll go down here. And then add component, physics, rigid body, and add component, box collider. And now the cube, both cubes have a box collider, or, or both things have a box collider. So when they overlap, they should trigger a collision. I guess we can just add those that one collision um, node collision event. <clears throat> and for the collider component, um, let's see. Let's just do it on the uh, hand. And let's manually get box collider. I recommend this for now, um, plugging in the box collider instead of using the object picker just for now, just because I think they're, yeah. I just recommend that, just trust me. Um, and then the collision event, I think we want to just check for it every single frame, right? So that whenever we want to do something every single frame, we use the update node. And every single frame, it'll do this one thing. Um, event type on enter, so when they touch, is what on enter means when they first touch. And then we will just, we'll just, uh, I don't know, set visibility. Uh, and for this one, I will use the object picker and turn off this cube. And we'll just leave it as visibility off. And then if we go to this cube, we can see well, it's kind of out of the screen. Yeah, this is the thing. I'm going to have to get full screen, aren't I? Aren't I? You can use the um, runs of dancing. Oh, that's true. Make him punch it. OK. Yeah. Addy actually mentioned in the chat, let's just test it using the full body video simulation and set the collider for the right bicep forearm and hands and send the object shooting from the camera. <laughs> oh, interesting. Uh, wait. I just want to mention that on the TikTok live side, I see Adri Foxy. She's a effect creator, and she's been making some real good effects recently. I personally love the demon fruit match that she did using our slash match template. Um, One Piece is coming out, and I see a lot of people like loving the what's that? The real, not the animated version, real life version. But <laughs> I've seen um, that on Netflix. I've been meaning to try. Should I try you guys? Is it good? Do you guys recommend? Mind you, I've never seen One Piece before. So I am trying to decide if I should indulge. I heard that the original um, One Piece series has is like over 200 hours. I don't know if I'm ready <laughs> to dedicate, but if it's good, I will definitely try. It seems like there is a lot of people on the TikTok chat and the chat is buzzing. Hi guys. Wait, what? <clears throat> oh my uh, God. It looks like it's colliding very early, very quick. Um, if you can see when I restart it, it basically hits on the first frame. It might be because the body avatar drive um, takes one frame to recognize the bot, the first person in the screen. So maybe the cube is defaulting to uh, some collapsed starting position. But yeah, it, you can see if I don't turn it off, it's just right there in front of the camera. Uh, it might be just too huge. Maybe this is the wrong size. Oh my gosh, on the TikTok live side, there's a creator named Drama News. But um, this creator says, I love you guys for making this 
um, program for us creatives. 1.2 million on the launch of my first effect. That is insane. Congratulations. Great job. <laughs> yeah, that's that's wild. That's really good. That's a great first effect. <clears throat> okay, so now that I made the cube smaller, um, yeah, you have to make it really small for this. Hmm. But yeah, one as you can see, if I move the cube into his hand, it, so he punches through it it'll disappear. So that means that this collision effect event is sensing the hand collider <clears throat> hitting the other random cube. And this event is just a generic, it hit something kind of event. And then if you want more info, you can get it out of the contact info array. And if you're not sure how to use this, I highly recommend reading the learning resource online on the website about it, because it'll give you info about uh how to access each of the things in the array and what they are so like you know information about the other thing that it hit and you know you can get all these things out of that and then also just <clears throat> um physics info and collision info are going to be super valuable to you um because these things are the based on what you connect them to, uh, for instance, a rigid body, you'll be able to get all of these different infos out of the uh, rigid body that you need for debugging and stuff. And yeah, for a case like this, you probably were doing a lot of debugging. Maybe some of these, this information that you could pull out of the, your rigid body might help. Uh, hopefully that was helpful and you get your box punching effect I'm stuck. <laughs> um, Adi is saying it, it seems like something is overriding the world scale when instantiated the body tracker. Um, yeah. It seems like a uh, one to one hundredth scale. Um, and Sasha said we will need global and local transform perhaps. And then Adi suggested micro jam full body tracking template. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Uh, that would be a cool, cool thing to design, like a game around. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, interesting. Recently, well, we've been seeing a surge of such cool new physics effects, like drop this key into this thing. Or I really like um, our ambassador, Jonathan Hunt new effect where you have the light bulbs going around and then if you press it at just the right spot it hits the socket and then it gets connected and then it illuminates it looks so beautiful and well done if you guys haven't tried it out go check him out i'll put the link in the youtube comments right now